You know what I'm sick and fucking tired of this time of year is the people with the fucking pumpkin spice everywhere, the fucking <laughs> sun. I got, I got one on, on the first day that it came out, went back to work and informed everybody that the pumpkin spice latte is around. I was like, go, be free. Everybody take a break. You know, I... I, I understand it. I get it enough on the on the pumpkin spice latte. I don't I don't get it for the freaking frappuccino. I don't get it for the fucking donuts and yeah. carrot cake and shit. The, Guys, the, we're just hitting it because it's trendy. The Have your sp- own fucking opinion. Okay. God the, damn. Uh, yeah. Okay. Real quick, the pumpkin spice donut at Tim Hortons is fucking delicious. Is it really? Yes. It is actually so good. pretty good. <laughs> Even had it was actually it's pretty good. That's, but that's the and, only and the pumpkin spice Here's muffin thing is pumpkin amazing. Stuff. Here's my thing with pumpkin stuff with pumpkin pie and things like that. Um, there was um, someone I know their mom made a pumpkin pie forgot to put the pumpkin in just put all of the spices and whatever cream and something and what all of that stuff in and it tasted the same and nobody knew until they finished it went back and she was like I didn't actually put any pumpkin in that which means it's got nothing to do with pumpkin it's all the additional it's all, the spice. It, 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 it's all spice and nutmeg and cinnamon like there's your pumpkin flavor yeah and it's bullshit that you can't get it year round. That's a marketing technique to get us to go buy it over and over it and over again. We live in yeah. a capitalist world, That's right? It is. Uh, and everybody fucking knows it, but we all still fucking fall for it. And so, join me. Start the resistance. Swear off the pumpkin spice. <laughs> That's it for the rest of October. I'm swearing it off. I know you like your donuts and your muffins, Dan. Oh, ten out of ten. I'm not doing this. Oh, I am. Also, I am the most basic of white bitches t- when it comes to my. Speaking pumpkin of spice basic hotties. white bitches, we're coming up to that time of year, the worst time of fucking year, where everybody starts dressing like Han Solo again, and I have to see you. Fuck Fucking furry jackets and hunter boots everywhere I go. So that's why I get excited for Halloween when I can focus on the goth girls. With I'm actually going to go with Han Solo now for Halloween. I, yeah, I, 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 you, I, you started off and I'm like, yeah, because it's Halloween. They're dressing up as Han Solo. No, nope, I'm just talking but about But no, no, you're, you're just talking about f- like the typical fall dress where everyone's Fuck wearing Terry, are, you jo- are you going to join me in this anti-pumpkin spice? No, because I really like it. Fuck get, you yeah, guys. 100% no. I get mine half sweet though because I'm not a monster. Uh, okay, look. Hit me up. Hit me in the DMs on Instagram uh, at Rusty Styrofoam. Join me. Viva la resistance. Sure. Hit me up in the DMs as well. No, you just want to sit there. Fuck. God damn, Terry. <laughs> Don't hit I'm, me up I'm in the DMs. I won't respond to you. I'm starting a movement here. <laughs> oh... Welcome to It's a Mimic with your DMs, Adam, Dan, and Terry. Okay, guys, welcome to the It's a Mimic show. My name is Terry. I will be your dungeon master this Hi, evening. Hi, Terry. Dan is not your name. Dan, <laughs> who I was going to introduce first. That's why I had... Wait, wait, wait. You interrupt him. You give him... You say his name wrong, <laughs> and he targets me right off because the bat. Because in my mind, I was about... I was getting ready to introduce you. On my right is... Uh, DM Dan. Terry. Okay. Can you say it correctly, please? There you go. It's on not my, Tari. I didn't say Tara. Huh? On my left is... <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> We're God so good at this podcast. What thing? episode are we on, man? Like this, is, this is 36, yeah. We yeah. started in January, so we I mean, we should be good at it by now. Should be. Today, That's friends... That's Adam, by the way, for anyone who cares. Today, Fuck friends, mes amis, we are talking about undead, specifically zombies and skeletons. Ooh. Mindless undead. I don't know. No, zombies aren't quite as mindless as they are in like traditional or D and D zombies. That's true. They've got a little bit more going for them. Right? Yep. Well, what I want to do straight away is I will very quickly touch on some obvious differences, or not so obvious, maybe for some people between zombies and skeletons. Then we will roll initiative, and I'll fire some questions at you so we can. Okay, and just, some and just to be clear, we're not touching ghosts. We're not touching ghouls or ghasts. No. Well, this isn't liches, vampires. This isn't demi liches or anything else. This is strictly zombified shit. And, hey, look, it's a pile of bones walking yeah. at me. Yeah, that's because this is part of our mob mentality, and these are typically the things that an uh, undead mob will... If you have a mob of ghosts coming at you, you are fucked, son. Yeah. That is it, right? Yeah. Like, you're done. Yeah, and I, I mean, there may be some extra things that you guys want to add in, but by my, by my understanding, the difference between a zombie and a skeleton is a zombie is a reanimated corpse covered in flesh, as well as having the skeleton within... The skeleton is just a skeleton. It's so, not a reanimated corpse. It's reanimated pilot. What bones. about the hunger for human brains? No, that's not a thing in 5th edition. No, it's not. <laughs> no, no, no. But people don't know that. When they're going to come up... Actually, you know what? I'm sorry. Pause. That's not a fucking thing anywhere. Mmm, brains. is from fucking, like, Reanimator 2 or something. Like, it is not a main part. Someone's going to be yelling at the fucking speakers right now. But that was never Night of the Living Dead. They've never been about eating brains. It's about eating flesh. 
It's just fun to say mm, brains. So anybody that's like, oh, they're there to eat the brains. No, bitch, you want a mind flayer. Fuck off. <laughs> I'm done. I have a question then, Adam. Zombie mind what do you flayer. think of iZombie, the TV show? Have not seen it. Um, actually pretty good. It's cheesy. It's no, cheesy. we don't have time. Okay, sorry. We don't have time. I'm, we're all going to roll initiative, and I'm going to ask you guys some questions. You ready? No, because um, it's so far away from me. Be, get I, better at sports. I, I, I have an back yeah, injury, and you're making me stretch across the table. Okay, like ready? Un, deux, trois, allez. I rolled a natural one. Good job. Well, Dan rolled a 13, and I came in, in the middle with an eight. All right, so what are we talking about? <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, I'm gonna move fast. I'm gonna move fast. I'm gonna move this other way to put my Microsoft tablet. Sponsor uh, us. <laughs> yeah, Microsoft sponsor as well. Sure. Well, we'll be Starbucks after my rant. Um. Okay, team. Real quick. Um. Why do we like or dislike zombies and or skeletons in Fifth Edition? It's you first. No, I'm not. No, no, you're last. Sorry, that's Dan first. <sighs> I I say quick fire. Yeah, I didn't yeah, want yeah, to start no, with a big okay. sigh. Uh, quick fire. If anyone's listened to the meet the DM episodes, I did say that I don't like undead. That's I right. don't like skeletons, and I don't. But that's just because they're overused. Um, I think if you could this use is them the one trope you don't like. Uh, uh, there's several I don't like. Uh, if they are used properly, though, they're good. Uh, really lean into the horror of them. The um, dehumanizing aspect of them, and they could be fantastic, right? So, um, yeah. But what's the main difference for you? The main difference that, that for was me. That's a question. Yeah. F- fleshiness, like it, it's. No, it was what do you like or dislike about? Yeah, it's what I like or dislike. Uh, I I like the fact that they are um, low level fodder undead. They really get the tone set early that anyone can't. Like you've got one of these things living inside of you at any point, so it kind of gives that extra threat other than just death. That there is a torture after death, and it could be mindless shambling horde, mm-hmm. and being a member of that. So uh, that's what I like about them. What I don't like about them, they're overused. Um, every single module has some. You know, you fight seventeen skeletons in this one room because you walked into this one crypt. Like, sh- sure, let's move on and do something else. So that's that's me. Look. I love zombies. Zombies are my jam, man. Every fucking zombie movie in existence, I've seen it. I don't bother thy zombie because I know it's like a tongue-in-cheek look at what the zombie genre has. No, I'm not into it. Fuck you. <laughs> I, I, I'm into like my, my evil dead zombies at, at most, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I like slow-moving horde. I like that it is an environmental threat. Yes. It is not a monster. It may feel like a monster. It may run like a monster if you have one. But these are hordes. No movies like, oh, and then the single zombie rose. No, man. 19,000 fucking zombies rose. Yeah. You are overwhelmed. There's nothing you can do about it. That's what I like about zombies. Uh, What I like about skeletons is the fact that they are my my secret uh, weapon. They're low level. So it allows me to give a big, ha-ha, fuck off, for one extra round. I don't like putting, oh, the skeleton is walking towards you, and then it was actually a gelatinous cube with a dead body inside. No, it was a gelatinous cube with a skeleton inside. You killed the gelatinous cube, now the skeleton's coming out. Yeah. Right? Like, I like the idea of uh, there's the suit of armor standing in the corner. I right? love that, actually. You, you that there'd l- be skeletons moving within the gelatinous cube, yeah. so you know you have to deal with them after. Like, I love that. I, I love the idea of... Uh, of the suit of armor over in the corner, and it's just standing still, and it's because they have disadvantage on the perception check because the fucking visor's down on yeah. the helmet. But you go over, you've cleared the room of all the whatever necromancer bullshit, a couple of zombies are there, and you go to get the armor, and there's a zombie inside of it. Zombies are popping out of shit all the time, and I love them because they're a jack-in-the-box monster. That's what I love about, about, about or sorry, about skeletons. Zombies are... Zombies are fun because there's a lot of them. Skeletons I like because there should be few of them. Yeah. I really like zombies as well, just real quick, because of the undead fortitude rule that's there. Which yeah. If they if you knock them to zero, they roll a constitution save, and if they don't, they if re- they succeed the save, they're at one hit they point. They return to one hit point. It kind of gives that my, hit them in the head feel to it. My favorite thing about it, too, is that uh, is that you can knock them down to zero again, and they roll again. Yeah. They could just keep coming back. If you got a DM on a hot streak... Man, you're in trouble. Yeah. I, I absolutely love zombies and skeletons. What I don't like is they're seen as, there's this jocular approach to them, and they're seen, and it's by experienced players. It is by people like yourself down there, you played for years and years, where it's like, oh, skeletons, clickety clackety, wackety wackety. But it, it's not like that. Maybe your sex tape? What? Clickety clackety wackety wackety? <laughs> <laughs> but, 
it shouldn't be like that. Where for me, I like a very ex explorative game, role play heavy game, and I would be describing how the pile of bones with still a little bit of flesh hanging from it is starting to creak and 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 crack, and the, you can hear the bone snapping as it raises up and reanimates itself, and that should be terrifying for a low level party. Oh yeah, I, I love. Just, ah. Yeah, I love it, especially if you can do it. I did it to your character when I killed him. He came back as a zombie. Yeah. And that was the most horrifying zombie I've seen in D&D because everyone at the table had their stomach flip. Yeah. Like, not only did we just lose a character, and this was, like, horrifying to everyone, but now we have to murder him. Yeah, exactly. First, attack their hearts. Yeah. And Adam loves that as much as yeah. I do. I guess what we're trying to say is if you're a DM or if you're a player on this, specifically DMs, really lean into the horror of your skeletons and your zombies. Okay, so what's the uh, what's your favorite part of running uh, zombies and skeletons? Uh, well, you just said it. It's the yeah. bounce back. It's the bounce back. Okay. Yeah, the bounce back of zombies. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Adam, sorry. God, how many times are you going to... Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Jesus, Terry. <laughs> it's, or, or is it Dan? Fuck you. <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway. It makes us up. Um, There's three of us. Well, it's because you two look the same. <laughs> the beard. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, uh, no, my favorite thing about running them in, in 5th edition is the fact that they're so low CR that I can throw a horde at you. Yep. And this is one of the few times where I feel like I'm not using any mechanic except the action economy against you. You cannot sit there and go, I hate zombies. It's I hate zombie hordes. And it's just the number of them is what makes them frightening. Yeah. Honestly, even at lower levels, I don't even think I'm really going to be counting hit points for skeletons. I mean, I think they have 13 hit points, if I remember rightly. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I would do it up to about level 3. Yeah. Um, 13 hit points is roughly an average for 3d6. Yeah. So when you have people that are doing 3d6 damage around, when your rogue is getting two dice on their sneak attack or whatever it is, mm -hmm. then yeah, I'm going to drop these guys down to minion level. Yeah. So one hit point. Same AC, but one hit point. Um, what would you guys say is that what little known part of running zombies and skeletons, um, do people not know about? Um, skeletons have a deceptive amount of armor to them. Um, they, they are a lot harder to hit. Zombies are very easy to hit, but they're a pool of hit points. As a quarter CR creature with 22 hit points, that is insanity. And then it keeps bouncing back. And then it right? can keep bouncing back with one. Like, mm -hmm. they are deceptively hard to kill for a first level party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it comes down to the fact as well that they're going to be like, oh, it's a zombie. The, the slam attack in this thing is, is not to be, mm -hmm. like, laughed at. These guys, they have weapons to use. This is not the punching zombie, the clawing at... Like, they've got some real fucking guts to their attacks on this, too, right? Mm -hmm. I really... I know, guts. Yes, Yeah, man. they got some hanging from their mouth, too. Yeah. Um, I, I really like them. I got a question, though. At what point is it a zombie and what point is it a skeleton? Like, what's the flesh ratio? Mm -hmm. uh, function. If the flesh functions, it's a zombie? Like, if the muscles are straining, it's a zombie? Yes. But if it's just hanging off the bones, it's a skeleton? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, you know, I'd say for what little known part, um, it's zombies and skeletons, is I think there's an excellent way that we can reward players, and this bit gets forgotten, is that zombies, especially skeletons sometimes, is these are bodies that have been reanimated, still carrying items, still carrying ammo, still carrying secrets, still carrying the message that wasn't delivered. Everything that they had in life, they still have. So you can have that little side quest of, Oh shit, we need some more of this, we need some more of this, but we know this town is full of zombies. That's okay, we will purposefully go to this part, because we know we will be rewarded with these items, with this ammo, with whatever we need. Yeah. Um, I think that gets forgotten. You kill the zombies! Okay, everyone fucking leaves. I'd be looting those bodies. Well, and, and that's when you find that one, like, misdelivered letter that you can then cause your players to go back onto the track that they're supposed to go on. To. And I think you can teach your players this lesson by having them score after one specific person who has yep. become a zombie yep. to get something specific to teach them. Like character. like there's a zombie horde, but you need the one in the blue hat. Yeah. Right? So you got to work your way through. I think that's fun. You need to roll percentile dice to see if 
You know, you just got to roll. Put a little bread bag token or a milk token on something. You could, this is the one right here oh, after a good perception check. No, I throw them into the foggy, the misty graveyard and there's zombies oh, all over the place. Yes. And you're, and you're rolling um, percentile dice to see if this is the right zombie. Yeah. Even. Three of them were in blue hats, by the way, because it's a common thing in this world. <laughs> right. And so every time that it's the wrong one, you give them another modifier to the percentile dice. So they will eventually find this. But yeah. So this takes me back to puzzles, which we were just talking about. Yep. Um, recently, when I, we, we were saying about puzzles within the encounter. Yeah. It's not necessarily the locking mechanisms. This is your puzzle right here. The encounter is not to kill all of the zombies. It's to survive long enough to find what you need. I like that. All right. Okay. Um, guys, what would you choose to include about zombies and our skeletons in your own homebrew campaign? Uh, I would give zombies an actual weapon attack like a base zombie had given an actual weapon attack. like if it happens to be carrying a weapon yeah it's just holding on to the hammer that it was holding well, yeah. on to rigor it, mortis had just set in and never released it was, and a, it's just it was a smith he's yeah. still holding Something his hammer like skeletons still get weapons skeletons still get weapons cool. and stuff um, but zombies do, yeah you know what you're right although I would inha- I would innately give them an advantage on grapple as well there's nothing more iconic than the zombie dragging you into the hole. Yeah, I would have the weapons being used as improvised weapons, or even if they're even if they are swords, like they're a swinging gonna, chair. They're not going to be yeah. yeah, but they're not going to be skillfully swung, right? You know. I would also give skeletons. I, I I I would give them the same mechanic that the zombies have for the getting back up. Um, it's just would take another turn, and it's not much of a roll. I, they just reassemble themselves and stand up. You actually have to destroy the magic of them, not just chop them in half. They I, just reassemble and stand back up. I, I like that, but I, I wouldn't put a magical spin on it. I would put a physical spin on it, get people to think about damage type at low levels. You know how trolls, they only stay dead if you use fire yeah. or, or yeah. acid? For a zombie, if you don't use bludgeoning, if you shot it with an arrow and it went down... It will stand back up. Period. Yeah. You have to beat those bones to dust. Yeah. Right. So I don't know. I like. I like that too, Dan. That's uh, that's fun. My thing is, I would, and I do this anyway. Um, for undead in my homebrew, is I love the idea of shoot the zombie in the head. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the head, uh, six hit points because they have standard twenty two, right? Mm-hmm. So I'll give the head six hit points, but the AC is twenty two because you're aiming for a smaller target. Mm-hmm. Right. Would you give that? Would you let your players know about that, or would you just if they roll above twenty two, they hit it in the head, it's down. It, yeah, it's in my description. Oh, I rolled a twenty four. Oh, and the arrow, you know, comes through and pierces through the eye, and it's an auto kill. They don't get back up. Right. Yeah. This is it. And so they would see that it's happening sometimes and not others. And I don't think it would take long for an intelligent party that's not playing on their phone at the table yeah. to put together that aim for the head. And I really want to reward the players. For discovering that trope that they yeah. might not know about. And, you know, you'd reward them for, if they're noticing a pattern, they try a perception check or an insight check. Yeah. Reward them with that information. You're noticing that they're dropping automatically when you hit them in the head. I would say that that would be investigation. Mm. Perception. If it's happening insight? around you. Do you think, now, insight's about a person's intention, right? True. Um, no, I'd say it's perception. Yeah, perception is. You're, yeah, you're, you're preserving the, well, the preserving. Um, perceiving, Observing. perceiving the world around you. Okay, I would say it's an investigation check when you're noticing that all of the corpses so far have holes in the heads. I, I have a question for the yes. uh, zombie getting hit in the head and it's automatically dead thing. Yeah, beholder zombies. All they are is a head. Uh, yes. So you would be aiming for the eye to get back into the brain. Okay. The cool. idea is is remove the head or destroy the brain. Yeah. Cool. Right. So there it is. And again, that AC is stupid fucking high because you're trying to shoot through an optic nerve in the back. You're not even trying to hit the eyeball. Yeah. You're trying to hit dead center of well, this. Uh, Beholder Zombies base AC is 15, so you probably say like 25. Like give it a plus 10 DC. Yeah, I have no problem just r- like totally ramping it up on the AC for this and not telling them yeah. and just reward them when they do it. Or if they say, I'm going to aim for the eye, I'm going to adjust it a little bit. And they then have to do enough damage to hurt the eye to, to do it. Yeah. So an, so even if you hit the head or the brain or whatever, you didn't do enough damage to destroy it. Yeah, yeah and it should be a portion of the total hit points. I love like, the idea of the javelin or the spear perfectly placed yeah. through the center of the eye. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you on that as well with the, a percentage. That's why I said six for a standard zombie, thinking yeah. that they got 22. Well, a beholder zombie can have up to 143 hit points based off the book. Uh, so, I'm, like, make it... 40 hit points, 30 hit points. Yeah, I, I say 30%. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that one. So Excellent. 
Okay, well, in, um, we'll talk about combat and strategy a little bit more um, in just a minute here. First, though, we're going to go to our commercial, and I can't wait to buy these products. Hello and well met. It's Daniel, the keeper of arcane secrets. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Anyways, I'm here letting you all know that you could find and listen to the Call of Cthulhu actual play Halloween miniseries right now on the It's a Mimic feed. I have been anxiously awaiting the opportunity to share it with you all. So check your podcatcher, YouTube, or www.itsamimic.com to check it out. Thanks, and on with the show. Man, I gotta get this cough checked out. Okay, team, moving on to topic two, let's discuss combat and strategy. I think what we'll do is we'll roll initiative again, and then I'll fire out the questions to you um, as we go through. Uh, All right. So if you're ready, and three, two, or one. What do I get? What do I get double digits? What's that nine? That's got two nines with me and Terry. Two nines. You guys are tying all over the place. Twelve, eleven. Beat me by one. Well, doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile, Dan. Winning's winning. Wise man said that. We keep telling ourselves that, but our inches. Anyway, Terry, <laughs> you wanted to ask some questions. Vin Diesel. The question is, first one, uh, what tactics should players use against zombies and skeletons? Okay. And or skeletons. All right. I'm going to keep this really, really simple. As I said beforehand about using the action economy against you, these things travel in hordes. We do all sorts of mob mentality things, and people will all split up to attack a different zombie, which means that if they're all still standing at the end of round one, because you've all done half of their damage, and you've got a party of five and there are five zombies, that is five attacks against you coming in. So your pooled hit point resource is lowered potentially five times. Focus on removing these things from the board, one at a time. Just knock them out. Control their action economy. Don't go for the, I hit that guy once, and that guy once, and that guy once, because you're a monk. Hit that guy three times, drop him. Yeah. Then move on to the next. And you guys need to work together as a party to almost siege, uh, like SWAT team, drop these guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I know the rogue may not get full damage, you know, if, you know, round one, because it's not flanked, right? Or the, um, the swashbuckler isn't going to be able to get everything that, that he needs to kill a zombie to do 22 hit points at level 2, right, yep. worth of damage. And so I'm sitting here thinking, you need to team up to wipe these things out. Even skeletons, which have fewer hit points but higher AC, focus your attacks. Um, the other thing that I would say is area of effect, right? You have to wipe out as many of these as possible. But even the area of effect that does a little bit of damage to everybody... The acid splash that does one d six to each mm-hmm. is not as good as a firebolt. Do that one d ten. Yeah, yeah. Right. You have to get rid of these things. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's my suggestion, Terry. Yeah. Well, this is a time where with hordes where initiative is crucial. You know, if for whatever reason, I mean, and it sucks to be you if you're if a horde of zombies initiative is rolling higher than, than your entire party, but initiative is going to be crucial. Um, what I would say is remember the priority of the battle. Not every battle is the same. Do you need to kill all of them or do you just need to remove yourself from that situation? Do you need to kill all of them or do you need to just redirect them away from you? I feel like this is good advice, both what you're saying and what I said, for just mobs in general. But because these are just an overwhelming, like, it's environmental. We said it earlier, right? Yeah. Yeah. This, more than any other mob, is crowd control. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I would say... Check yourself for a moment and just remember what the priority of the battle is. If you can remove yourself, get away. If you can redirect them, get away. Um, this would be a time where I would suggest height as long as you can get away and you're not trapping yourself by climbing up the tower. Uh, but start to think 3D when you're facing hordes. Yeah. Dan? For me, uh, use their speed against them. Zombies move 20 feet. Um which well, that's most the... classes could get past, right? Yeah, that's every class can get past. And, and zombies also don't have a ranged attack. So if you just need to kite them, keep keep a distance on them, and and you could solve a zombie issue fairly easily. Well, that's the thing about every zombie movie is you're not fucked until you're cornered. Exactly, right? So really work on keeping the distance and, like you said, bring them down and ensure that you're dropping some every turn or you will get cornered. For skeletons, um, I'm just going to echo what you said there. You got to bring each one down individually. They will do a lot of damage to your party. Um, and sure, they don't have as much hit points, but they are harder to hit, 
So if you're a level one party fighting six skeletons, you're going to get screwed unless you're dropping these things. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what I would do. Cool. Let's flip it. Uh, we'll go in the same order. Um, uh, as a DM, what's the tactics they're using against players? Okay. When I'm going to drop zombies or, or skeletons down, I'm thinking minions. What I want to do is I want to drop a larger one. They've got stats for the Minotaur skeleton in the, mm-hmm. in the monster manual and, uh, the ogre zombie as well, yeah. right? These are. And the warhorse skeleton too, oddly enough. Yeah. Well, it's because a lot of different things will ride a, a yeah, uh, skeletal horse, horse right? Yeah. So, um, the, the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have these guys. I'm going to go minions, maybe even from very low levels, depending on how many I'm going to throw out there. I want a big area with this wave that is coming. There's nothing you can do about it. And I want to do a siege. You, I want to do freaking um, uh, Night, of, Night of Living Dead, where everybody gets into the barn or the general store or whatever it is and now block the windows. I've done this a few times in my campaigns, you guys. Sometimes it's kobolds or it's... It's uh, it was undead recently with a church as well, right? So you guys have to manage your your openings, and if one person retreats from the door every round, nine zombies are coming in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's terrifying. Overwhelming numbers have, have got to push. It's almost a skill challenge at that point. But the skill you're using is your attack. Yeah, um, and hopefully your damage dice is high enough. This is not something that I want to potentially roll a one and have it stay a one. I want to be able to add my modifiers to the to the damage, yeah, right? For sure. And that's how I'm thinking of it from a player. So for a DM, either have a big open area with the wave coming forward and make that scary as all hell, or keep it tight, mm-hmm. very tight. I like the idea of building a labyrinth with zombies and, and skeletons in it, and they can see you, but they can't get to you. So as you are walking along west, they can see you, and they're walking west as well. And there are so many of them, you don't have the ammo to take them out or the spell slots. Well, it's just like, when are you going to come the gap in the fence? When, where is the gap in the fence, right? Yeah. And you are slowly discovering this labyrinth. Yeah. That's terrifying to me. I love that. Because the players are like, what do we do? Yeah. And then, you know, half the players will just turn invisible and fuck off. But the <laughs> other half are like, oh shit. The paladin's like, guys... Yeah. Oh, the monk well, will just stand at the entrance and kill everything. Well, the human fighter can't see them, so yeah. he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> he's fine. <laughs> there you go. No idea. But, uh, but the other thing, too, that I'm going to do is these guys do not have high enough intelligence to be able to focus on the cleric, who is your problem Yeah. as a DM. So, therefore, give, the skeletons especially, give them the ability to focus and strategize skeletons are dumb. They're they're far below average, but they've got a six int. There's some base level strategy that they can't imply with this. Well, it's the same. No, they're this... firefight and flight at that point. I mean, that's not much more than like an ape. They're not coming up with, with combat strategies. Everybody focus on the cleric is not something they're No, saying. no, but I mean, everyone focus on that one because it's bleeding. Yeah, I mean, they would focus right? as much as wolves would focus. Yeah, exactly. they, they want to take down the kill, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say... Yes, definitely using waves in multi-directions as well. But I have an idea which I would like to include in the game. And Please tell us this idea, Terry. I'm going to tell you the idea. Oh, Adam. okay. I thought that was it. I thought you take, tell us the idea or not. <laughs> take it from when you were talking about how to build horror. Yeah. Time, sensitiv- time sensitivity. So it's not your idea. Um, it's someone else's. I'm borrowing part of your idea. <laughs> okay. Your idea inspired my idea. <laughs> oh, well. In that case, you're allowed to continue. Creating that sense of urgency and, and, that, and panic. You guys ever played Zombie 15, the board game? No, but I've no. seen it. I desperately want it. Every 15 minutes, the uh, the timer goes off. And the horde comes in. And you, it goes into the square where you are. But I like the idea of saying, this is a 10-minute timer. Because this creates urgency for the for the, yeah. uh, for the the turn. Every 10 minutes, you're going to roll 2d6. And they're going to come from random directions. I'll let you roll the dice for it. But this is your urgency to get through this. So the idea of the wizard like flipping through their spell list, going, "I don't know, I don't, you've moved. Now you've moved. Now I can't do fireball." You know, um, it, it it negates all that. I like it. All that. Pressure, stress, and they'll feel, especially with the background ambient music down that you hit because it scares the shit out of you. Yeah, all of that would just fill me with a pink and fluffy feeling of happiness. Right. As a DM, as a player, as a DM, it, it's a deep oily. Well, I'm sense fucked of up with that. I probably still enjoy yourself. it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> 
So what I would do is I would actually uh, I like what you said how you said they were atmospheric they are environmental, environmental. yeah um, I I would definitely uh, I want to make them into traps yeah, like look, make a zombie or a skeleton trap like I, I hear you one hundred percent and the best place to look for that is The Walking Dead yep like The Walking Dead does a lot of shit wrong but it does it lurking does zombies well. yeah. yeah really well yeah. so I would do things like. Uh, uh, spring loaded walls with zombies and skeletons like pasted to them that swing out to the party and like the zombies are grabbing onto the rogue that triggered the trap and pulling him back into an area. Instead of a swinging wrecking ball, it's Instead just, of a swinging swinging ro- it's just a, it's a zombie <laughs> on a rope. Or they fall down the spike pit and yeah, sure, but as they hit the spike pit, they activate a pressure plate which opens up the walls of the spike pit and they're just chock full of zombies or skeletons. And now they've Gotta get out of this pit with smooth stone walls while zombies and skeletons are... I hear what you're saying, and I love that, but I just like the idea of... It's just the last adventurers that have been through this. So the person that tried to swing over the pit trap but got shot by the arrow or something along the way is now just a swinging zombie. And and, and you do this with... uh, Oh my god, that was Carl! Well, you do that that with uh, kobolds. Like, a kobold would see that and be like, I can make a trap of that. And like... Dig a hole in the wall, lodge this zombie up in the wall, put a loose thing and a trip wire, and then just sit there and watch and yeah. giggle when it's tripped, right? Like, I would use zombies and skeletons purely in a... Well, not purely, but I would use them in a trap sense. A catapult. Use zombies as siege weapons. <laughs> like... Your party's trying to defend a keep. They're flinging zombies overhead into the keep, and I sure love they flip over. They fuck, f- that is brilliant, Dan. They do fifty, but then thirty of them stand up, and now you have to deal with zombies inside of a keep. Yeah. No, oh, I love the idea of you doing it with skeletons too. So they land, and they've got like fucking armor on. They're all wearing plate mail, but they break on impact. So you have these these like half skeletal knights crawling because they're just a spinal cord and arms and a skull. I yeah, love that. Right? And I hear what you're saying where it's, if they may throw 50, however many pass their constitution save or whatever it is to, to reanimate get themselves. Get back up and, and then you have a horde of minions up. that legit by rules have one hit point. Yeah. No, on. legit by fourth ed rules. That's not in fifth ed. No. In this, with the zombie, if they make oh, their sure. they, they land, they come back to they, one on a success, they drop oh, yeah, to okay. one hit point instead. Okay, they just become minions. Yeah, they right. just become minions. Yeah, I knew that. Okay, so yeah, exactly. I, I was thinking skeletons still. I was very excited about that. Um, last question then. Uh, what do you prefer in 5th edition, zombies or skeletons, and why? Adam? I, you know what? I love zombies. I love them so much. They are my favorite fucking thing in the world. But I'm going with skeletons in this. Why? Because... I can put spiked armor on them, and now they're grapple problems. <laughs> I, I, I can give... Yeah, right, Dan's eyes just lit up. Well, my catapult thing, and then he makes, like, the goblin catapult thing, and he's just flinging goblin spiked catapult skeletons <laughs> yeah. across walls and things. Yeah, so I love the idea, because skeletons have a little bit more intelligence, because they can wear armor and they can carry weapons. You have more versatility with them compared to zombies. Yeah, Dan? No, no, keep talking. I'm looking something up. What are you looking up, Dan? I want to know what the intelligence of a goblin is compared to a skeleton. Goblin. No, no, I meant as opposed to a zombie. I know. I'm interested about... You got me thinking about, like, what is a goblin's Pretty intelligence? Sure. Pretty sure it's 12. So oh, that's 10. It is 10. I'll yeah. So, no, I, I, I really, really like the idea of skeletons. Also, breaking apart. Like, I, I do this with oozes, where if you hit them with slashing damage, they fall apart, Mm -hmm. and then you've got to fight two oozes now. I would do that with skeletons too, to a lesser degree. You knock them down to half hit points, and they kind of crumble, and now the skeleton is hopping on one leg, or he doesn't have an arm, and like you can just hack away at a skeleton, and hear the clacking bones and whatnot. But I like them for atmospheric reasons too, because you can hear the steps of a skeleton like click clacking down the staircase towards you. And then it is just, it, it sounds like rushing water, but no, it is 10,000 skeletons in the dark, all stepping on stone. That is brilliant. That's what I like about skeletons. And, and also, I like the fact that you can get skull lords out of them, where I love the idea of you can build a skull lord with a skeletal mage that picks up the head of this skeletal mage and the head of that skeletal mage, plunks them down on each shoulder, and now you have a fucking skull lord, which is just a three-headed skeleton that can cast a shit ton of spells. And I just love the idea of skeletons putting themselves together wrong as well if they can get away. Oh my god. I have one skeleton with three arms. Yeah, so like... And one leg. So you can do all sorts of crazy shit if you get creative with a skeleton. For uh, for a zombie, you can do it too, but you need 
you need some sort of black magic necromancer voodoo priest kind of thing yeah. to do it. And honestly, I like the idea of zombies of the voodoo level zombie as well. And I would love to inject that into a campaign. And if I'm going to do that, I'm not going to use base level zombies as well. Hmm. I like zombies. I feel like I can get more creative with zombies. I mean, yeah, there's some good ideas for skeletons, but I just, for me personally, I'll get more creative with zombies and I think I will be able to instill more horror in the game. Yeah, I'll say that with for zombies. And here's the thing that they get over skeletons as well, is the fact that you can tell a story with how decayed or what pieces are missing from a zombie. Mm -hmm. It's more difficult to tell that story with a skeleton just with like atmospheric shit. A zombie that shows up and it's got a gaping hole in its chest and there's no heart there. Mm -hmm. And every zombie you run into means someone's taking hearts. You can't get that out of a skeleton. No. Not yeah. to the same degree. So I hear what you're saying. You can, you can, and you can ramp up weird body horror shit too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. for, for me. You can have a little zombie dog. It's a skeleton dog. Don't kill my dog. Okay, go. <laughs> for me, I, I definitely prefer zombies, but because they seem more mechanically Literally and literally fleshed out. Um, they have this, uh, undead fortitude ability to, that really injects a lot of flavor to them. There is no mechanical difference from a, to a skeleton to like a low level knoll. Like there, there's like, what? Or, or, or something along those lines. Like they what? are normal armor, normal, uh, well, like they don't normal have hit like points. Specialist like stuff. there's no special ability of a skeleton. They're just a skeleton. Right, uh, so I they seem bland. I would inject a lot of other work into skeletons and inject things into them to tweak them to my own games to make them interesting to use them. I could just use a zombie straight out of the book, and I'm happy with it. All right, let me tell you why I, why I like skeletons. What I would inject in them is I would have a necromancer that that puts yes, Dan, my penis. Is that what you're <laughs> laughing about? No, you're, you're going to talk about the bones. You're going to inject into zombies. So uh, yeah, go ahead, skeletons, skeletons. specifically. Yeah. But the necromancer that magically re-adds like a tongue back into this thing. So now this is a skeleton that can speak. Or the skeleton with the eyeball and he's got advantage on freaking perception checks. Yeah. Or the skeleton and you give them each like, like one extra weird thing about them. Yeah. The other thing too is I can, I can light a skeleton on fire and I can just say these are fire skeletons. I feel like I can't do that with fire zombies. No, that's true. You can't. Yeah. Right. I could do toxin, I guess, and poison and you could necrosis. Also, I, I find zombies, you can't really do NPCs with them. You can make a skeleton NPC, like the skeletal butler. Yeah, I mean, I love the idea, too, of, of um, Army of Darkness, right? Mm -hmm. With the skeletons all, like, cracking jokes and shit. And I know that they can't speak, like, rules is written. But I love the idea of, the, like, they walk into a... Well, you could go Pirates of the Caribbean as a curse, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I, are the Pirates I, from the Caribbean, are they uh, skeletons or are they zombies? They're, they're zombies. zombies. Yeah, they're right? zombies. Sure. There's so much flesh there. Yeah, they're still moving around and looking around and shit. Yeah. They're using their organs still. Um, no, I love the idea of, like, walking down into a tomb and there was like, oh, shit, another mausoleum. Who gives a fuck? And they walk in and there's, there's two skeletons standing there. One of them looks at the other and is just like, ah, oh, look what we've dug up today. <laughs> and they're just fucking annoying. Yeah. And you don't have to kill them. They're not going to fight you. But they're, it's all just, like, bad puns. Yeah. I and got then, a bone to pick with you. Yeah, <laughs> shit like that. And then you go through and, and, and then you have to turn around and get to pass them on the way out, too. Yeah, just throwing his leg to his skeleton dog. And, and you know the bard is just going to befriend the fuck out of them, yeah. right? Well, like, I would do the same thing with, like, a passageway that has two doors. There's just two skeleton, like, skulls on them and they're just talking and they've never really seen each other. The world of the Statler, right? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I would go the other way. More fucked up but completely the other way. When you said, and you prompted this in my mind, when you said um, if, if they were to have a tongue. Um, oh, they're kissing people. Shit is They're brilliant. kissing people. They're making, they're fresh kissing people. No, but they're, so imagine that you've knocked the zombie down, broken the legs and the, the skeletons, sorry, are crawling towards you but they have a tongue and it's going, no, please, I'm sorry. I can't help it. I can't stop. And it just keeps coming. And you're like, this This guy's like clearly cursed or doesn't want yeah. to do it, but he has That's to. That's terrifying. Yeah. I love that. And they're all going, we can't stop. We can't and, and stop. He gets, and he catches up to you and he just like wraps his arms around your leg and licks your calf. No yeah. what? <laughs> a really that, good that's what spell combination yeah. a really good spell His combination kinks. would be your necromancer just casting animate dead and then your bard doing this just to freak out whatever you're fighting <laughs> like as a spell combination like you have the zombies moving forward their mouths aren't even moving but the with ghost sound or whatever it is your bard yeah. injecting this out I love that alright okay dissonant whispers <laughs> let's uh let's do a shout out Adam 
Normally we shout out somebody from Instagram or somebody that we know online. Um, let's uh, do another throwback to helping out the Pickle Dragon. Yes. As well. Um, we'll keep his information in our show notes for the next few weeks. Yeah. Um, but we're also doing the Deep Dark of Radiance. Dan has decided to put together a Call of Cthulhu uh, eight-part series with a couple of additional episodes that uh, kind of look at a meta perspective at the Call of Cthulhu 7th edition rule set. Yep. And it was absolutely fantastic. The only reason Dan isn't talking about it is because he's living and breathing editing it right now. And he started thinking about it. It's but, the bane of my existence. And dreaming about it. But yeah. I am still very excited about it. This is, in my opinion, I don't like actual play. This one I like because you're taking the time to put the shit in there that I want to hear. I want to hear the sound effects and the voices and the and the the music and whatnot. This feels to me more like an old uh, teleplay, right? That that was on the radio than it does a an actual play podcast of a bunch of jack offs sitting around a table, yeah, you know, yeah, spewing yeah. their bullshit and drinking coke. Yeah, that will sponsor us. Sure. <laughs> but I mean, and we were a bunch of jack offs sitting around the table drinking coke. Yeah, but sponsor us. But this Dan has cleaned it up. He's made it fantastic. And you pushed limits to the point where we actually had one player squirming uh, in her seat, which was. Absolutely, it's phenomenal. my gauge of whether or not I should stop or keep going. Is I should always, going. always keep going, always yeah. keep going, yeah. always keep going. So, but we were we're really proud of this. We're really excited about it. We've got a really aggressive release schedule. If you have the auto download feature on any of your uh, podcast apps, it should already be there. Uh, if not, you can check it out on our website uh, at www.itsamimic.com or and all of our shits on uh, YouTube as well. But give it a listen. Check us out. And uh, and I hope that you guys enjoy the journey that we went on uh, as much as we enjoyed it because we but things it, it they just became explosive right yeah it was phenomenal it just it blew up yeah yeah and so um, really detonated all over the place I, yeah I I really. It, that one didn't even make sense. <laughs> that one wasn't even suggested. There was TNT. They blew shit up. <laughs> so anyway, there's there's a, there's a lot of fun there, and and one of my favorite things about it's it. So Dan, bad at puns. <laughs> what one of my favorite things about this is that we didn't choose Cthulhu himself as a as a entity. There was a different thing. No spoilers, but there was a different thing going on, and uh, and it was cool to see a different elder god. Um, that was kind of threatening the world. So yeah. anyway, uh, Danny did a great job on it, Thank and you. I hope that everybody takes the opportunity to join us, uh, you know, on their way to and from work uh, for all of uh, October. We should have enough material to really help people through the entire was, month to keep shit spooky. It was yeah. awesome. And I really see this game blowing up. I'll say it again, blowing up, like getting big. I think that people are getting interested. You've seen it all over Instagram now. People are trying it out. We said earlier, Critical Role had done their one shot. Yeah. Um, but you know, won't be as good as ours. Okay, team, are we ready for topic three? Let's talk about example encounters. We've already touched on this a little bit and I was just looking at my notes like, fuck, I've already talked about this. <laughs> okay, we'll roll initiative again. I'll throw the questions at you. It keeps it nice and fluid. Are you ready to go? Okay. Natural one again. 15, 13. Oh, my God, life. Damn. I'm just good at everything. All right, ask me something, Terry. Oh, and I will answer it appropriately. How would you make <laughs> zombie and or skeleton combat scarier at higher levels? Okay, at higher levels, what I'm doing is I'm building it off of other monsters. Okay. Okay, and so there are actually rules for this in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Let me run through them really quickly. Okay, sure. Okay, so... <laughs> God damn it, Terry. Okay, so for a zombie, here's how you build a zombie, all right? This is right off the chart. First and foremost, you get plus one strength, plus two constitution. Your dex doesn't change, but you get minus six to your intelligence, minus four to your wisdom, and minus four to your charisma. Uh -huh. Which means if you are a high-level Rakshasa, for example, and you get zombified, your stats are still pretty fucking good. The features are you get the undead fortitude, which is you stand back up, right? You are also immune to poison damage, which means you can't be poisoned. Um, and you have dark vision for 60 feet. You cannot speak, but you can still understand any languages that you knew in life. So you don't get any other special magical shit, but I'm assuming that any other... Let's say that you've got a big tail attack. You would still have that, right? You would just be using that attack with these new stat differences, plus one to strength. Right. Can we do this as a player character? Oh. 
if, if we have six if, to int. No, but if we, you know, if this is just part of it, and you can leave it up to the player, hey, this is a situation now. You know how we can be turned into vampires. This is a situation now. You can run with it if you want, or you can go with it for a couple of sessions, and if you want to hand off the reins to me, that's fine. I'm into it 100%, but you know what? You're taking your horror campaign, you're making a comedy campaign. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily. Everyone I know, everyone I know would be like, oh, I'm just going to take my torch and put it in his chest cavity. You hold this for a minute, will you? And I'll, and then keep going. Like, yeah. they would be doing wacky shit all the time. Uh, I don't know. If you spun it a certain way, you could probably make a lot of weight to this. Make it a actual curse. Um, that and has to be lifted? That's that, what I said about that, voodoo zombies. Yeah, right. uh, and, and have the person slowly decay. Like, don't give them all of this right at the right. bat. Oh my god, you have gentle repose to... cast on you for ten days, yeah. and you have to get the shit. You have to. Yeah, get but rid- if you give them a, or if, but if you give them a huge and emotional connection to another player character, so I'm thinking, okay, okay, my half orc wife Kogu, we talk about. If that situation had been done with me or her, I we'll don't think we'll I don't. Yeah, write this down. Yeah, this down. <laughs> Ways to hurt Terry. I don't think there would have been comedy stupidity. I don't think any. Oh, I you would, wouldn't I have would, allowed it. I wouldn't have allowed. I wouldn't have let anybody. But, uh, no, no, uh, you yeah, would have been pissed off. But well, you, we would look at the table, and the first person to make the necrophilia joke would just get beamed across the head with a fucking baseball bat. It would be yeah, your day. Right? You couldn't help yourself. Um, anyway, for a skeleton, here's what you do to build a skeleton. You get plus two to dex. Plus two to dex for a skeleton. Weird for me. Your flesh isn't getting that in the way anymore. I, I guess. I don't, <laughs> I don't fucking get it. You get a minus four to intelligence. And a minus four to charisma. So your wisdom stays the same as well. Do you get a mechanical hatred for all things He-Man? Yeah. You're vulnerable to bludgeoning damage. You're immune to poison damage and exhaustion. You can't be poisoned. Your dark vision is 60 feet. And again, you can't speak, but you understand the language that you that you knew in life. So I am making these high-level creatures um, now, either zombies or skeletons. And maybe the zombie that stands back up, if I'm going... Like, it was a necromancer. It was a lich that was a necromancer in real life, and they killed a necromancer, and now it's back as a lich, because that's what it needed to finish its ritual. And now you've killed it, and now it comes back as a zombie, and now you've stripped the flesh off of it, and now it comes back as a, as a skeleton. I'm I'm bringing this character back over and over. It keeps fucking standing up. And we have the stats in the DMG to build it. Yeah. Cool. Um... I think, because we just mentioned player characters, they're more likely to go with the skeleton one. I think if you're going to do the curse type thing, I think... Oh, I, I like the zombie so that you can watch them rot. Yeah. Yeah, I like the zombie as well. Cool. Dan, you're up next. Um, honestly, I, it, uh, it's interesting combat with... Uh, At high, high levels. levels. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like... Uh, for those of you who have watched Game of Thrones, the Battle of the Bastards uh, visual of just swimming through a... St- uh, swarm a, a a of enemies there a, a swarm of enemies like a tidal wave of bodies yeah um, I would do that with the undead um, uh, specifically the zombies uh, they are a obstacle to get to your end goal so your does the high zombie level have play, a bite attack slam just slam, slam. just a fuck that give amazing. them a bite yeah that's give them a bite, give them a bite. Yeah. but like I I I would make them a environmental threat more than anything else. They are a speed bump that your party has to get past to reach the evil necromancer or something. And he would be using zombies and undead as a barrier as he's casting this big ritual at the end and you got to get to him. And for whatever reason, you can't fly or you can't just bamf up to him. Either the distance is too great or you have many other... With these rules that you just mentioned, Adam, you have many other different types. So you have... Minotaur zombies, you've got stone giant zombies, you've just got these gigantic things that can swap things out of the air. Um, and yeah, I, I, think, I think that's super cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really, really like that. that. Um, I would also, high level, I mentioned it with the zombie catapult, do that. Have a high level uh, siege um, of a keep that you are trying oh, to defend. Like zombie hill giants beaten at the freaking Right, all of those things. Uh, yeah, I'm into it. Right, like... Uh, Zombie hell giants being at the gates. Uh, you have zombie, and you can even go with uh, zombie beholders descending from above into the keep, and then just shoot. Everybody pirates. listening to this is already thinking about zombie dragons. Mm-hmm. Yep, of course. Yeah, of course. Okay, so Cinder girls to fly down and so, blow. So a bunch of stuff. hold on, I, I gotta ask then. Um, 
Okay, first of all, we don't need zombie dragons. We have the Dracolich. But anyway, um, the the zombie bite, the, z- the zombification, what triggers it? What turns you into a zombie? I, I think that if you get beaten by a zombie, if you die by a zombie's hand, you you get added to the horde. Like, what, what, how are you doing that? This well, would be your home brew. Well, that's actually going to be hardly. would be my idea for how to make them scarier. Would be and I would be fair to the players in that they are noticing that the zombies that have all white eyes, once they bite you, they're leaving the mark, and it's only a matter of hours before you turn. Um, because oh, give that, them a bunch of beloved NPCs, take the town exactly, out. Exactly, because that gives you that time sensitivity as well. And it's a matter of hours. It's not going to be days. You have four hours to get this figured out. Because if you're higher levels, you have ways of moving places quickly. You have those higher level spells. You have But you've got to point. abandon the freaking siege as well at the farmhouse, right? Oh, yeah. I love this. Yeah, yeah. absolutely love And what this. about, you know, you may have uh, sent that person in on a reconnaissance mission to get in because they're, they're the wood elf monk or whatever they can get into the town get the information we'll wait here but there's all, there's zombies that come it may only be two or three it's all going to depend on initiative because if they go first and they bite you you have to leave okay so sorry oh. Here, here's oh I like that I oh. like that a lot um, what I would do with it as well is I would have it be a pl- like at high levels your sit your party your your uh, heroes they have a city or a keep that they are running, typically. Have the plague slowly spreading within their city and they have to solve it, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, like, make sure they find every single last shred of it. Find patient zero if there is one within your city. And shut this down in a very, like, okay. paranoid... Uh, what, yeah, what about the NPC that doesn't tell anyone they've been... Are, are, yeah, that too. What right? about the child that's scared to get in trouble? There's what? always that one guy who's, like, nursing that one arm a little bit too much. In every fucking movie. Yeah. But uh, I got a question then. Because we've got monks that can just shrug off fucking disease, right? We've got druids that can shrug off diseases. We've got um, paladins that have auras that... And there's, you know, uh, they're removing curses. How do you make this disease stick? What are you looking up, Dan? I'm thinking, um, uh, what you, is the difference between, um... I would even say that, I would I would say mechanically this is not a disease. This is, um, almost like a spell as a delayed effect. It would be like a change of race. You, uh, yeah, you know, I'm into it. I, I like the idea of having this be a spell disease, a magical disease, a spell plague of some sort. Yeah, no, that's what I was saying. I would I would make it akin to lycanthropy. Which what always yeah. drives me nuts that you can solve that with remove curse. Yeah, and why not let you remove curse with it? That's a high enough level spell. It seems strange. It, it, no, yeah, it's a third level spell. It seems strange that you can just automatically remove a werewolf be out a vampire. No. Well, no, I would say it's it, the third level to take out the zombie threat within a city is a Big ask. If it's individual characters, sure. But if you're going for a citywide cleanse, third level spell is way too high a price. Uh, look, I'm just going to say it outright. I would not do this because then there's no threat to the to the player. Uh, I wouldn't run this as a curse. I wouldn't run this as a disease or as a poison. I'm I'm saying, hey guys, this and lycanthropy, these run on their own rules. The same way that I've got fire in my campaign, but I also have hellfire. When a freaking devil uses fire against you, it's different than when you walk through the bonfire. Yeah. Right? It burns brighter and hotter, and you have to earn that resistance more than just, well, I'm a fire genasi, so I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Right? So, no, like, it, it matters. This is hellfire you're dealing with. This is a zombie plague you're dealing with. Yeah. Okay. Um, next question. Yep. Uh, what kind of social or exploration encounters do zombie and or skeletons provide? Well, I like the joking, the puns and whatnot, but let's talk about exploration for a moment. I, I love the idea of um, of everywhere you go, there's evidence of these things that are moving, where you have, how many times, you oh, there's humanoid footprints. Yeah. Right? And then all of a sudden, there was a, there's a battle, and the humanoid footprints are moving a little bit slower, and now they're dragging. Mm-hmm. Right? You're really dropping the clues that you're dealing with undead in here. Um and you can do that with blood smears and and pools of blood, more blood than a human should be able to, get, and yet he's still moving, yeah. right? And so I'm really painting the picture here with exploration, uh, and I think that I would have people. I this sounds kind of horrible, but when I when dogs die, they don't die in the open; they crawl away, mm-hmm. 
and they find some small area and it's usually under a porch, behind a couch, you yeah. know, at the base of a tree where they can nestle in to breathe their last breath. I would have my NPCs, my players doing that as well, uh, my characters, so that they are going to drag themselves off into a closet or a corner to just try to hold themselves together as they feel themselves dying slowly, being taken over by this by the zombification, right? And then when you open that there is your reason for why there is a zombie in the fucking closet. And if your perception checks are good enough, yep. you'll know he's in there. You'll be able to start recognizing the signs of people, the zombies that are hiding behind things. The skeletons that fell down to the bottom of, of the stairs and, and broke their neck yep. in the fall, and then stand up with a broken neck, right? Yep. And so the way that they die is far more important and I think that's what's missing from a lot of these these mm -hmm. horror campaigns is playing with why and how the characters died. Yeah, the breadcrumbs as well, in that the guy who put himself in the closet leaves his own sign that says "Don't come in." Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, again, we're getting this all the way through zombie fiction. Why are we not injecting this in our D and D stuff? Yeah, right? uh, Dan, you went next, right? Yeah, yeah um, I would. Uh, I have always loved the idea of like the um, necromantic nation or city that uses zombies and skeletons as their very base level uh, labor force. I've always loved that idea. So I would have things like uh, skeletons tied up to uh, signposts that are just pointing their way to the city. So you like walk up because they know a base level of uh, language. Be like, where's the castle? And this one skeletal arm would point down that one road. Mm -hmm. And then it would drop. And then that's the way your party would go. Have that feel. Uh, there's uh, all that, of that's your... Not, that's not workforce so much. It's inanimate object. Well, yes. <laughs> but your workforce... Like, you have zombies that are also tilling the fields. You have zombies... You're working in the, in the rock quarry. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you have uh, skeletons that are um, bound to doors that... Them, them, like they themselves are the locks. Like their fingers are the deadbolts inside of the doors. Mm. And if you speak the word, they will pull their arms back, which will unlock the door or something like that. I really like that for an evil campaign too, where you get hired by the necromancer that runs the city to come in because they captured a freaking ASMR cleric and he's being held in dungeons. But everybody goes, that everyone in the city's undead. We can't get fucking near him to ask him questions. Go in there and interrogate. I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. So that, yeah. that's, that's what I would do is I would use them more as scenery and yeah, the environment. Yeah. And environment. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to, um, explore social, uh, encounters more, by playing on the races that are not humans. We see zombies, we see skeletons, we automatically think they were probably human at some point. I love dwarven zombies. And this is why I love dwarven zombies, because dwarves are proud. So if you go into the dwarf kingdom, where they've all been turned into zombies, the royal family, and you have the dwarf NPC... He's going to he, look at them and be like, we make the best zombies. Yeah, he will, <laughs> but he also will probably not let you kill them. Right? He will not let you do that to his or, people. Or when you when you kill them... You now have to stop and lay them to rest. Yeah. Right? And it's going to drag your dungeon crawl a bit. So now you're, you're, you're playing on how proud the dwarves are. Or when you walk into the elf kingdom and they're all zombies or skeletons, how humiliating that is for the high elf that's with you. How Good. degrading. Fuck how degrading they find it. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> but how degrading they would find that. So now you have much more social uh, ammunition to play with. Yeah, um, I love it. You know, it's not just hit points anymore. Okay. Okay, next question. Um, how do you handle... This is probably maybe more of a mechanical question. How do you handle a zombie or skeleton horde in game? Okay. As a DM. As a DM, this is. It, all right, as a DM. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to lean on the intelligence quite a bit here. Mm -hmm. And I've talked a little bit about... We've talked about sieges. We've talked about um, uh, controlling the action economy, right? Getting in quick and trying to get out, not getting bitten and all that stuff. Will a zombie walk off a ledge? Will a zombie on top of a building walk off the edge of the building to get to the person on the next building over? Well, so mechanically they what? Reduce their intelligence by six? I would by say six. It depends where you started. Yeah, I'd say. so I would say that if it's four or less, then yes, they will walk off the freaking thing. They're not worried so much about self-preservation because they'll take the damage. They'll take, And I'm not going to let them heal. They are not going to heal between rounds. You will find a bunch of zombies that fell off a cliff and they're all going to be broken and they'll have six hit points. Yeah. Right? I love the idea of, of minions 
Um, so I, I think that the crazy thing about a horde is, you know, that there is the undead army coming and there are ghouls and ghasts as, as the bigger monsters and there's zombies and there's skeletons. And then you see the zombies coming and they're just a force. They're crawling up each other World War Z style. Yeah. Right. And then you're like, well, wait a minute. I thought there were skeletons too. And that's when the manholes open. Yeah. And they've come in through the sewers. Nice. Right. And that's, that's where I would say, that you are managing the city as much as it's like, oh, there's only three exits out of the room and do we manage the exits? And and I was saying, how, how do we play this thing where it's a Night of the Living Dead feel? Do it in the city. You're losing neighborhood by neighborhood, district by district. This is the siege of the undead coming in and they're a wave and you have enough time to get down to the poor district where there's, where there's the orphanage or the merchant district where you might be able to get some magical weapons. Yeah. Where do you go? This is where I encourage you to split the party so that you can have the stealthy guys go off to get the weapons and the cleric and the paladin go off to rescue the orphans, right? We've got a real cool feeling now to this set piece encounter, yeah, right? And watch the kingdom fall. You happen to know through the rogues um, uh, contacts or because you're in favor with the prince or whatever it is, you know about a secret back entrance out. Right or there's a boat waiting at the docks for you, yeah. And you need to accomplish the things in the city as it's get, getting overrun and they're chasing you. And bitches, there's no such thing as a short rest. Yeah, go. This is it. Ticking clock. There it is. Cool. That's how I handle the horde. Love it. Uh, for me, I think it's uh, it's a lot of struggle and a lot of uh, trial to run a horde in a straight like toe to toe match. Um, so to simplify the dice, I would, I would run every single zombie as identical and I would stop really rolling dice for them. Um, what I would be doing is there are eight squares around any given player. So if you're going toe to toe with a zombie, like a zombie horde, um, for whatever reason you find yourself in that situation. Um, if you're working melee combat, you roll your, um, you know, D8 and that's how many you take out this turn. Um, and you make a goal that you have to get to through the end. Because if you're just trying to individually kill the entire swarm of zombies, it's going to take you forever and you're not going to win. They have action economy against you. So That's kind of the purpose, though. Uh, I know, but after round three, it's just boring. You're just rolling dice. and, and That's why you have right? to give them other objectives inside. So, yeah, so you're yeah. giving them another objective further along. Um, and when it comes down to the nitty-gritty of it, I would say, like, each zombie does three damage. You roll a D8 to see how many hit them on that turn. What What is it? It's it's 1D6 plus, plus one. one. So, yeah. so that's, that's four? Yeah, right. On, on so average? I would give just a little bit lower than four. Like, just a little bit lower than average. I go on the low side of average because of that, right? Because there are so many of them. I want to give my players at least a little bit of credit here right uh and the same thing like if a fireball does a a 20 foot uh explosion calculate how many there are roll the appropriate amount of dice see how many you take out Mm -hmm. like it's it's just it's it's you you gotta you gotta simplify the math when it comes down to it i don't know to speed things up i'm not i would also run them more as a layer action than a uh, yeah, an initiative roll thing. twenty, they all go. Yeah, at initiative yeah. roll twenty, they all go. They all yeah. Go. I think they they all have to go. Well, I mean, you can have if you have different zombies or different skeletons in the fight, they can all have it. But by type, I agree. Yeah. Um. But I I wouldn't have the oh you roll a d eight and that's how many you take out this round. Fuck that. No, you have two attacks. You could take out two. Roll to hit the zombies. I will roll d eight to see how many hit you. Yes. Yeah. But. What does that do with the AC now? I'm going to let you roll a D6. And if your D6 rolls higher than my D8, you don't take any damage. If my D8 is higher than your D6, that's how many hit points you lose. Sure, yeah. That would right. work. And that way, on the zombie's turn, everyone is just surrounded. Take this. this gets more complicated when you have skeletal archers. Yep. Right? So I feel like with skeletons, it's a little bit different. But zombies who are melee only, that's how that's how I would run this mm. this horde level. As far as mechanics, and I, and I would have it. It is a necessity to have an external um, objective that your party is chasing after or going for to either stop the horde or uh, slow the horde or control the horde, whatever they want to do. Right. Okay. What I would do is, um, 
I would be very hard and relentless on the players in the sense that it is not just about them. This whole horde is moving in whichever direction they try and lead them down for whatever strategy they're using. Yeah, they're, they may be moving towards the players as they're following them, but they're going to tear up, bite, chew, slam whatever comes in their way. So if you're moving through, through a city, it's not just you that's in there. Mm-hmm. So you got to be very careful with how you're trying to get out of that city because, yeah, they're going after you, but they're going to go after whatever gets in their way as well. And that's going to be a lot of people hiding um, on the way out of that city. So just to be clear, we're not talking about skeletal hordes, right? We're, skeletons have armies. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we're talking specifically zombie horde in this. Yeah. I'm, sorry, I'm referring to zombies. I'm yeah, referring yeah. to zombies. Yeah, so am I. I just wanted to be clear about that. Um, when, at what point do you stop using zombies as skeletons? I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't either. B- because if I've got... Okay, look. Your monk and your fighter can hit 9,000 guys at once. you got got um, casters that are blowing up huge area of effects and whatnot, even at high levels. Your one or two big bosses, your big tank, your dragon, whatever it is, by level 20, you need minions. Yeah. You do in order to have it be a combat. And this... If they hit you... They will do the regular amount of damage, but you only need to do one hit point to hit them. Yeah. That suits me. Yeah. It yep. works that's, just fine with me. That's I, fantastic. I, that is the one rule from like, fourth my edition. favorite rule from fourth edition. Yeah. That, that and the bloodied over. condition. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would, okay, there's another mechanic I would add. Bloodied condition. If you are bloody, the horde, every zombie has advantage to detect you. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, and I would say that even with like your stealth checks, they have advantage if they are considered horde, which is let's say 12 or more. I'm just picking an arbitrary bullshit number. Yeah. Let's say 12. So if there's more than 12, then they have advantage to hear you because the trope is that guys are sneaking from backyard to backyard. The zombie horde is in the front street. And there's one zombie that suddenly turns his head and caught it out of the corner of his eye and starts to move toward you. Yeah. And then the rest of them also turn and slowly start to come. It only takes one. Mm-hmm. But there are so many sets of eyes and ears out there that they should have advantage and that makes us super fucking scary. Yeah. Even at high levels. Yeah. Love it. Anyways, that was my answer, Dan. Okay. What do you stop using zombies and Oh I, no, I never would. Okay. The, and for the exact same reason. Their minion level uh their minion level threat. Um I would in fact just use more of them the higher level my party gets. Yeah, and you know what? They don't all have a personality like a goblin does. I feel bad having like 45 goblin minions that are just going to get wiped out with one hit point. All of these guys feel, I feel like they need to have a personality and they're running and they're screaming and they're doing all their crazy thing or they're yep. attacking and they're fierce orcs or whatever. The zombies are the horde. They're a mindless, relentless horde. Yeah. Yep. Terry, we'd like to say horde some more. So, um, um, let's talk about your past when you were a horror <laughs> horde. Um, but, but when do you stop using them in a campaign? I don't. No, okay. For all the reasons yeah, you right. just said. No, cool. I think they're great. I'm not going to stop using them. Maybe somebody out there will, but not us. Okay, team. Uh, let's all give our uh, one example of uh, a zombie or skeleton encounter or plot hook that we'd run in the campaign. I, oh, we're rolling for it? We're rolling for it. Will you guys pick the dice up? Dan? Dan, you rolled a two. I Adam, rolled. you rolled a 17, and I rolled a cat. I am so fucking good at dice, guys. You are. Yeah. Sometimes. Other times you're terrible. Oh, yeah, I just, I'm coming off a bad streak. I've rolled, yeah. I think, two ones and a four tonight. I've, I still, and yeah, Terry's got a bad luck today. Yeah. All right, so, um, okay, you wanted uh, an encounter, a plot hook that we'd run in a campaign yes. using zombie skeletons? Yeah. I got one. Okay, I got one, too, and I hope I don't steal yours. Um, I'm going to put the MacGuffin inside... Fuck. What, was, that, was that it? <laughs> no, no. Okay. I'm going to put it inside the zombified creature, and I'm going to make it a you have to get him. You can see where he is on a map. This feels very Saw, if there was zombies in Saw. Like, I guess maybe. Yeah. But the idea, it's it's not about the gore and the horror. It's there's a MacGuffin, and it moves. And it follows the horde. It just goes along with the Some zombies. sort of tracker would be great. Some yeah. sort of magic. You, you, you've got a scrying map that tells you where this thing is. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> but down to a hundred square feet. It's moving. Right, yeah, <laughs> right. And so your, your players are sitting there, and then a handful of zombies are crossing the bridge. They collapse the bridge, 
And then all of a sudden, that thing's moving really fast down the river, yeah. right? And oh shit, it's one of these fucking guys, right? <laughs> I love and you're this. consistently chasing this thing, and uh, you've got the navigator that can't do anything. And this way, <laughs> <You're just> like, <laughs> <laughs> but I like the idea of you absolutely have to have this MacGuffin, whatever it is. And you fought the pterodactyl who picked it up, and it was in their nest. And you know the it, the beholder is hoarding it as part of his own personal stash. And now it's just a zombie who fucking ate it. And he just happens to be amongst 10,000 other goddamn zombies. Because he's in the zombies. hand of some adventure. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? So I love it. Uh, so that, that's what I would do. I think that would be a fun way to be comically frustrating to a party. Mm -hmm. To play an encounter or two where they are chasing a zombie horde. And uh, was that the right one? I don't know, man. Check the map. Well, shit. Okay, can we split up the entire horde? Left or right. And you're just always trying to divide by two and three. Yeah. Right. Okay. You go distract half of them down this way. You distract half of them down that way. We'll see which way the dot on the map goes. Yeah. yeah you're right. one guy who's obsessed with board games pulls out and you're just trying to <laughs> flips it up. Is like, is he wearing a hat? No. Okay. Click, 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 yeah. click. <laughs> like those old uh, arcade games where you used to have to like break up a square so they get yeah. as small as possible. That's yeah. what you're trying to do cross section it down. Yeah. No, I, I still have a game like that on my phone. Like on my smartphone, and I routinely play it. Like I love those games. They stress me out. Dan, uh, you are next. Oh, I rolled a two. Oh, that's correct. Sorry, I'm still going off the old order. I like the idea of the whole campaign. Maybe not a one shot. Maybe a two or three, four session game being almost like The Walking Dead: Escape from Atlanta. Hex crawl in a city it can be very theater of the mind, but you're moving between districts and regions. Try you're starting in the center. And you're trying to get out. I absolutely love that as well. We talked a bit about about cities and, yeah. and whatnot. Here's my problem. When you fail your stealth, your stealth check three times in a row, or you've crit failed it or whatnot, and you are cornered, are you just a hitting a TPK on that? No, uh, no I would... I would. Um, How do you pull back on that? I would limit it to the region that you're in. So I wouldn't even say it's street by street on the city, uh, like on the city map. Um, I wouldn't be like, you're going down this street, this street. I'd be saying, okay, which which hex are you going into? You're going into this that's one over the here. pub district. That's the... You're in this district yeah, okay. now. Here's the scenario in this district. You're going neighborhood by neighborhood. If you make noise, yeah, it's in this neighborhood only is where it's going to be affected. Uh, I love that too, especially Different challenges like, in each district. Like, like right? you're running down the street and you're you're avoiding. Like your stealth check was a 14. Shit, what does that mean? Yeah. Right? And none of the zombies in the alley saw you. And you think you're okay until all of a sudden a zombie lands on the street beside you. Yeah. Right? And it just walked out of a window. Like it saw you and it crashed through. And yeah. And now all the other zombies heard it. Sort of and also here you go. inspired by like uh, like the warriors as well. Like if it wasn't gangs, it was zombies. You know, they're trying to make their Come way Come out trying to play. <laughs> <laughs> Can you clink, dig it, clink. sucker? Clink. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do it right because I'm just laughing. Uh, so what I would do is... Um, I would have the party need to find um, some alchemist or something like that, some some chemist in the city, and when they finally track down, I feel his like house, you're the kind of guy that would make that would name him Alfred Chemist, and he goes by Al. Al yeah, yeah. Al, Al Fuck chemist. you, Dan. <laughs> Um, you would just totally pull me out of the game. I'd be like, I can't even. No, I, I, no. For this, for this kind of plot, I wouldn't do it. Um, I would definitely lean into the serious uh, nature of it. Um, you're trying to find this chemist for whatever reason. You're trying to cure a party member, or you're trying to find the um, the way to make this one portion. Whatever the reason, you're trying to find him. And when you finally track down his place, you have this. Uh, you go down to the basement, and there's a single zombie chained up in the basement. And then you find out that this guy threw what is around uh, the um, th throughout the apartment or the house. There is many chemical concoctions and everything around the walls. And you figure out that this guy has crafted a way to create zombies. And you have to find him because then you have a serial killer loose within the city that is making zombies and just loosing them. Or whatever you do in that way. And and your party is now hunting down a serial zombie maker. Holy shit. You give the party a cursed fucking item. Dan, and they're the, they're the one creating the zombies. But it takes 2d10 days for the zombie to rise. And they're just leaving zombies in their wake. And the road doesn't even know it. Yeah. I love this. Or, or flip it on its head and he's already done all that. And then uh, accidentally pricked himself. And then chained himself up in his own basement, tried to give himself an antidote, and it failed. So you go and you search everything else, and you find out that the original zombie that created everything is the one that's chained up in the basement. I like it. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I love the idea of the zombie wake behind the party, too. Mm-hmm. 
Are we the and, baddies? And, yeah, and they sit there and they're like, we're being chased by the necromancer. We've been hunting him the whole time. And all he did was leave a cursed fucking dagger. You guys are doing the work for him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love it. I absolutely mean, love that's, it. Dan, that's cool. that was phenomenal. Chaps, anything else before we wrap this bitch up? Um, I have said before that I dislike undead. Um, You've I, changed your mind, haven't we? Uh, no. I, I, I've, there, there are some strengths to zombies, some strengths to uh, skeletons that I would definitely... Uh, I'll definitely use them more, but um, I I still like the other hordes more. Like they're still overdone. You really got to do skeletons and zombies well to catch my interest. And we've brought up a couple issues here, um, and a couple ideas for campaigns here that I would be really keen to play. But if they're not done right, they are the most bland and. I feel boring. I feel really bad because we went to the city of the undead in our own campaign, and it was run by a. Uh, freaking committee of vampires and everything in it was uh zombie messengers and and skeletal guards and there was a there were so many zombies and skeletons and death tyrants and shit all over the place and they were systematically taking all of the living and the living were putting up with it right they're like you know what it's a cheap labor force but if you died or you broke the rules and it was capital punishment for even the slightest infraction you die and you become part of the the workforce and we did this and it was this amazingly fun huge Huge combat with everybody sitting there fighting a uh, skeletal um, uh, minotaur and there were dozens of zombies and the vampires were around and they had um, like spectral servants and shit and that was the one session that you missed Dan yeah and you were relegated to NPC status and I believe they polymorphed you into a dragon yeah they turned me into a bronze dragon yeah so I, well, I think it was your idea to do that too wasn't hey, it hey whoa Oh, let's not go out in people on the internet. <laughs> okay? But there's I, a lot of people there. It could have been anyone's idea. But I mean, it was mine. I, <laughs> it's definitely my idea to tell I, you. I ran. I ran you guys up against undead three times in this last campaign, specifically zombies and and undead. One of them was the undead ship, where there's a whole bunch of zombies and skeletons and underneath ghosts. and ghosts. And Dan, you were so fucked up by the end of that one. <laughs> Right. Was that done well for you? Because it was a ticking clock and there Yeah, I, I, I especially liked the uh this isn't skeletons or zombies, but it's uh the the automated almost ghosts in the dancing in the ballroom. Yeah. That were dancing on their own, and if you came in and you disrupted them, then it would be a fight. But if you didn't disrupt them, you could walk through freely. Yeah, and so um and there was like all of the skeletons that were chained up around the perimeter of the room, so you had to stay in the center at one yep. point. Like I really tried to use Undead as environmental for that one, and did that work for you? Could you say you don't like them? So I'm trying to find out what what didn't work from your own recent personal experience that we understand. Yeah, no, no, I've I've, I've thoroughly in, enjoyed it. Uh, I think the uh, third time we've used Undead, which is rescuing the uh, my character's daughter, which we yeah. brought up on the podcast a bunch of times. Um, there was some aspects to that I didn't like. For example? Um, we had... Um, there wasn't actually really... A, there, there was the one zombie kraken or whatever it was. You guys didn't even fight it. No, we didn't even fight it. Uh, no one, no. We did. We just... Uh, no, I'll take it back. We did find there. I'm just trying to think of exactly what was going on. The thing I didn't like about that was that anything above 10 feet was this acid water that would chew us apart like it we were we were bound to the ground in that yeah but um there are times like if you if you're running your skeletons or you're running your uh, zombies like they are straight out of Jason and the Argonauts where they're just yeah like chattering little things uh it it feels played out to me and and you have not done that in this campaign, as far as I could tell. No, I mean, the other thing that I was thinking of as well is when I killed Terry and brought him back as a zombie, Hello. which I mentioned. You were there for that. You were present for his death. It happened directly in front of you. Yes. Um, and you did not get the killing blow, but you were there to... You literally picked up the pieces and took his top hat and brought it back up. Yeah. Uh, out of the hole, right? Like, how was that There experience? was an emotional moment, like... One zombie is far more. Mo it's, it's the it's the ninja rule. Yeah. One zombie, one ninja is far more dangerous, far more emotional than a horde of them. That's true. Yep. Yeah. Mm. I feel that way about robots and chimpanzees as well. Yep. Robots, chimpanzees, zombies, and ninjas. And Sturgis. One Sturgis, great. Five Sturgis. 
Fuck. No, 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 no. That's that's the opposite, though. Like Sturges are. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, Sturges are the opposite. Yeah. You just you just want to rant about Sturges. Fuck, I hate Sturges. <laughs> All right. I think that's it, Terry. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, team. Uh, um, you can let's do the instant handles. Uh, you can find me personally as Send Noobs D and D on Instagram. You can find Dan at um, at Oscar underscore the underscore Orc. All with case. You can find Adam at Rusty Styrofoam. And you can find any of us at It's the Mimic at, uh, on Instagram. You can find us at It's a Mimic DND on Twitter. You can email us at info at It's a Mimic dot com. And you can find us at www.It's a Mimic dot com. Please be one of the many thousands of people that are leaving us comments out there and we will respond. Look, it, it helps us out and we love doing this for you. And so we want you to help us out. So that we can provide more content on a regular basis. For sure. Um, and for those of you that are commenting, thank you. Yes, we love you. Most of you. We out. Thank you for listening to It's a Mimic. Check us out online at itsamimic.com or on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Have questions you would like answered by the guys on the show? Send them an email to itsamimic at gmail.com. Tune in every Tuesday for more. Thank you.